Nevada could be the next ocean front and California could be an island because this fault line could be the next boundary between the Pacific and North American plate. Does that sound like science fiction, guys? It does, but it is not. Scientists have made a new finding and it will absolutely blow your mind. I promise that. Hey, guys, um, I need to tell you about something that I found. Basically, as a coincidence, because I was reporting about the earthquake that was happening at the border between Northern California and Nevada, we had some earthquakes there. And I was looking into this. I'm like, wow, that earthquake was quite high in magnitude and where the epicenter was that's not the san andreas fault right that's not the cascadia fault or any of these other faults what is it so i was looking yeah okay there's the walker lane that might be responsible for that and the honey lake fault so i reported all this in my previous um video but what caught my eye is the walker lane so as i said it in my intro Nevada could be oceanfront, guys. And, and I'm not kidding. You will not believe this. But right now, under our feet, especially under your feet, if you live in California, something huge is happening that scientists say could reshape the American West. And forget what you think you know about the San Andreas Fault because another even more mysterious system of faults that is called the Walker Lane is slowly stealing the thunder of San Andreas Fault, I have to say. But basically, nobody knows about this. But of course, if you're here on this channel, you will know. And do me a favor, guys, give this video an early like and hype. It helps my channel and doesn't cost you anything. Thank you so much for helping me out. And now let's dive into this. Why Nevada could be oceanfront and California an island? So, Walker Lane, that doesn't even sound really like a fault system, right? So, but what if I told you that someday in the distant future, California could detach from the continent and float away? You would think I'm crazy. Maybe you already think that, guys. But no, really, this is happening. Reno might be one day on the ocean's edge. And that ground beneath Nevada and California could start ripping apart, not at the San Andreas, but over here behind me, Walker Lane. Let's have a look at it. What is it? Where is it? And how does it move that it can do that? And why do geologists say that it might one day become the new edge of the North American tectonic plate? That sounds drastic. It's big, guys. This is big. It's weird. It's basically slow motion geology that could rewrite the map of North America. So I'm going to break it down so that it's quick and easy to understand. What is the Walker Lane? What the heck is this, right? The Walker Lane is a massive region. It's quite long on on the Earth's crust that is stretching roughly 625 miles. That's roughly 1,000 kilometers, basically going from Southern California up into Nevada and beyond. So Southern Oregon beware. So it's not just one fault. That's why on the map you sometimes see this. It's, it's like a huge area that is colored. It's basically hundreds of fault lines. It's like a, a whole belt of cracks in the ground where the Earth's crust has been pulled, pushed, twisted, however you want to say this, as the tectonic plates move. And it runs basically east of the Sierra Nevada mountains, roughly following, if you're aware of that road, following the highway 395, um, from close to Death Valley in the south, up past Reno, into Northeast California. And why does this matter? Well, you might have a guess already, um, because it's actively moving. It's not quiet, it's active. The land along the Walker Lane isn't how we say frozen. It's slowly shifting because of the tectonic forces that are going on deep underground. And it 
absorbs a significant portion of the motion between two gigantic tectonic plates. And that's never good, right? That can always cause problems. We're talking about the Pacific plate and the North American plate, and that is huge that we have that inland. Usually we only have that at the boundaries where the plates collide, right? The subduction zones, Cascadia subduction zone. You might have heard, uh, I'm pretty sure you have, that the San Andreas Fault is the big deal for California, and it is. It's very, very dangerous. I mean, that's the famous one, right? It goes up from, from basically the southern San Diego area, Salt and Sea, where it's locked and loaded, through LA upwards to San Francisco, and even into Northern California, barely touching like Southern Oregon. Um, but scientists are now tracking movement with super precise GPS sensors. And you know, the technology is getting better and better and we're discovering these dangerous things now where you think, ah, don't wanna be so close to the San Andreas Fault, I move further inland, oopsie, right? So these GPS sensors have found guys that roughly 20 to 25% of the movement between those two plates is going through the Walker Lane region instead, not just the San Andreas Fault. So how can I compare it, guys? This is like discovering a second river that's running next to one you thought was the only river. Next to the Colorado River is another big river. Oopsie, it's there. We just haven't seen it. And both are carrying huge, huge volumes of water. This is what this discovery means, guys. That's why I said it's huge, it's big. How do we know that this thing is moving? It's not guessing, guys. Scientists use high-tech tools like the GPS monitoring stations that measure the movement down to millimeters per year. And they're moving, and they're using something that's called LIDAR. It's a laser scanning system that can map the ground in insane detail, guys. So using these tools, they have found many faults that nobody knew they were there before. They found out that parts of the ground are shifting slowly and continuously, where they didn't know that there is movement before. And, and this is important, they found evidence of big earthquakes that cracked the surface. So this isn't just theory, it's a measurable change. And they have dug these trenches in the Walker Lane, you see these images where they are doing their research. And here we come to the point, what did they find? What happened at the Walker Lane? What happened there before? It, it isn't just slipping quietly beneath our feet because it has quite the history. A recent example, guys, the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquakes. That's a sequence of quakes, including a magnitude 7.1. That was the southern end of this system, guys. So the scientists that were monitoring that quake, they found more than 1,200 recorded ground motions from just the foreshock and the main shock alone. And they had to update their maps to include previously unmapped faults. We said the Walker Lane is many, many faults, right? And that tells us two things, guys. The the Walker Lane does generate real dangerous earthquakes, and we haven't even mapped all of its faults yet. So since we mentioned it, how does it compare to the San Andreas Fault? Well, 7.1, that's a number. But there's a big difference between the two. The San Andreas Fault, as you see here on the map, is, is a long, continuous, well-defined break in the crust that you can see from from just being near it or flying over it in many, many areas, right? It's easy to spot on a map, but the Walker Lane is messier, we have to say. It's, it's a more complex zone of like many, many faults that are not perfectly connected, and some of them are very, very short. But when I say messy, guys, that doesn't mean unimportant or not dangerous. In fact, 
the fact that movement is spread across many faults is exactly why scientists are watching it so closely right now. Can it jump from fault to fault? And we know that it can. So could this really become the new plate boundary, aka Nevada Oceanfront and California as an island? And, and really guys, this is now the part that sounds like science fiction, but the scientists don't dismiss it. So some researchers say that over tens of millions of years, the Walker Lane could take over as the main boundary between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates, according to the University of Nevada. So what does that mean? The San Andreas fault could slow down. The Walker Lane could become more active. California's border might one day align with this new fault system. Eventually, over like a massive geological time, California might act like a big chunk of crust breaking off. That doesn't sound good. Or maybe it does because California then has two ocean fronts. Um, the coastline would shift due to the change in where the plates meet, right? Makes sense. But whew, let's take a deep breath, guys. This would still happen over millions of years, like not tomorrow. Um, it's not an imminent disaster. Although, I mean, California and the West Coast has enough imminent disasters, like the San Andreas Fault is overdue, the Cascadia Fault is overdue. We have a big fault underneath Vancouver, BC, Canada, in addition to the Cascadia Fault that is overdue. And now we also know that Cascadia Fault and San Andreas Fault have triggered each other in the past and have wiped, they could wipe out the West Coast if that happens. Again, um, the, the videos in the end screen, guys, you gotta see this. And I just read comments today in Canada from people in Vancouver where some newspaper has reported, I mean, they behaved like, they didn't even mention the Cascadia Fault. They just said, oh, there's this big earthquake that could happen and really shake Vancouver and destroy a lot. And then these stupid people, they post, oh, wouldn't that be great? Because then housing would be affordable in Vancouver. And I read this and like so many of them. And I was thinking, guys, there's no housing left if the big one happens. Yeah, t you, can, you can put up your tent somewhere but infrastructure, fires, everything will be destroyed. I mean, this tells me how uneducated people are about this big one, especially in Canada. When I go to the US and I talk to people, they know about this. But in Canada, in Vancouver, I don't know if it's like so many people coming from other countries, they just don't know because they didn't grow up there. But in my experience, that's not the case, even the people that did come, like me, they know about this. Well, okay, I'm, I'm, this is my topic, right? But um, some of the locals that are 60, 70 years old that live there always, they don't know. They just don't know. I'm like, do you know if your house is according to building codes? Is your foundation connected with, with your house? They don't know. But that's a different topic, guys. I made a video about what's going to happen to the capital of British Columbia, Victoria. And this will blow your mind because they're beyond being not prepared. Check out that video in the end screen. I call it the, the most doomed city in Canada. And it, it really is. But I was sliding away a little bit. So Walker Lane, it's more like watching a continental evolution over time. And what does that mean for real today? So the main takeaway is the Walker Lane is really real. It's active and it's measurable and it has a past. It's not just like some hidden geology textbook thing that is just on paper. It's an active player in how the Western US moves, California. It produces earthquakes, large earthquakes, and it houses many faults that could produce future earthquakes, more dangerous earthquakes. So if you live near Reno, Carson City, Death Valley, or the Sierra Nevada foothills, this system beneath your feet, guys, really, really matters. Check your homes, prepare. So 
this is basically my explanation why you should really care about this, right? It's, it's tempting to think that like earthquakes and plate tectonics are like far off mystery, something that happens elsewhere, but not here. But our planet, planet is constantly reshaping itself. And that's what the Walker Lane is basically demonstrating to us, right? We are living on land that is, is slowly moving and cracking basically everywhere. And the more we measure now, the, the better instruments that we have using satellites from space that can now track movements of the San Andreas Fault with the width of a hair, right? Um, the more dynamic Earth turns out to be. So understanding systems like the Walker Lane absolutely helps us to predict hazards in the future, educate communities that are nearby or right on top of it, and, and maybe and maybe in the future anticipate the next big shift, guys. So here are the videos in the end screen that are really interesting to watch. Thanks for watching. Please like and hype. Thank you so much for that. I hope to see you in a second. Bye-bye.